Remember, there's some pretty important information here in the disclaimer. You might want to give the video a quick pause and read it. Oh, hey everybody, it's me, Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog. Just here to remind you that if you haven't already, make sure to hit that like button. And for even more amazing customs, don't forget to subscribe to Wake Angel 2001. Because between you and me, they're way past cool. as they're here and make sure not to stumble it's time for angels figures of rough and tumble hey hey out there this is wake angel 2001 and we are going to be using those little rough and tumble video poems throughout the length of this video just just to have a little bit of audience participation and because i find it hilarious uh so uh, this has been a long time coming. Uh, we are continuing the IDW team because uh, apparently people want to see IDW characters more than Saturday morning characters, which is understandable. It is the more current and cool thing. So we're going to do rough and tumble. Get ready to shout. You better not mumble. It's time to play loud with rough and tumble. Alright, so as is tradition, since these characters come from spin-off Sonic Media, let's quickly delve into their backstories. Uh, now, uh, we're going to be here all day if I try to do every little minute detail, so let's just get the quick Cliff Notes version. Uh, Ruff and Tumble were first introduced as a pair of mercenaries during the Eggman War. They helped protect the... They help, they. They helped protect Barricade Town from the Badnik army, um, and then said that they were going to shore up its defenses. But what they really ended up doing was kind of taking over it as a couple of dictators, and since they were just stronger than everyone around them, they kind of had the full run of the place. Uh, they also took control of all the weapons so the townspeople wouldn't be able to fight back, and, um, and they kind of were just allowed to have free reign for a while until Sonic and Knuckles discovered them. This is where we got introduced to their first real iconic Sonic um, Team Rocket style poem intro, which immediately cemented them as some of the uh, most likable camp villains of the comic franchise. Uh, and of course, um, they were defeated by a combination of the fact that uh, Wisp Bonds are powered by Wisps, who are sentient and will not fight for evil people. So once Sonic told them that these guys were jackasses, they decided not to fire their guns for them anymore. And then without the weapons, tough though may be, they may have been, they weren't quite as tough as Sonic and Knuckles. So they ended up getting sent to jail, where they were later broken out by Dr. Starline, uh, who told them that they could get better weapons from Dr. Eggman if they could help convert Mr. Tinker. So they, so they kidnapped Mr. Tinker and uh, brought him back to Dr. Starline, who use a combination of hypnotherapy and, um, a, you know, finding Metal Sonic again to restore his memories and turn him back into Dr. Eggman. Um, now, they're... Uh, so, yes, if you think about it, despite the fact that these guys are just a couple of camp joke villains, they are sort of responsible for the Metal Virus being a thing. Because if they hadn't kidnapped Dr. Eggman, then he would have stayed living in that town making toys and amusement park rides for little kids. And nobody ever would have wor worried about anything ever again. So, uh, it's kind of fitting that these two guys were the first sentient victims of the Metal Virus. You know, aside from the test subjects in, in Dr. Robotnik's lab, Eggman's lab. Uh, so yes, Dr. Eggman told them that he that that they had been given a weapon that would turn that would give them the power they needed to fight Sonic if their little drill mech that they had been using had uh, failed. So uh, when they activated the weapon, all it really did was dump a bunch of uh, metal virus sludge on them, turning them into the first two Zombots. Um, of course, uh, they ended up send, spending the rest of that arc lying in the bottom of a deep mine shaft and were rescued after the metal virus was destroyed. And were immediately thrown in prison again, where Dr. Starline again broke them out to form his little team bad guys in the, in the bad guys arc. You know, the, um, where Rough and Tumble teamed up with uh, 
Zavik and Mimic and Starline to try and you know take over the world themselves. And uh, they actually proved to be uh, very effective members of the team. They worked well with others. Uh, they even they even made a new rhyme that incorporated all five of the ca of the characters' names. And they fought off a giant robot T Rex that Doctor Robot that Doctor Eggman had built to protect one of his labs. Um, all in all, I feel like uh, these guys actually are pretty capable of working with and for others. And, you know, the funny thing about this arc is that even Zavik seemed to be a pretty decent member of the team. I mean, I it's hard to peg what Zavik's deal is. Like, in one issue, he is literally trying to destroy the entire world just because it's there to destroy. And then other times, we actually see him admonishing his, um, his, his other people for unnecessary cruelty. Like, I don't, I'm not, I think I'm trying to analyze what Zavik is kind of, and like, he seems to have, like, a certain code he abides by. Like, like, he's evil. He believes that violence is, is, uh, is a tool to get what you want, and that might makes right. Um, but, you know, like, that, that's why he's so violent and wishes to, to dominate everything in front of him, but if, uh, people are in line with him, then he's, ac he actually shows a bit of deference. I mean, even in the video game, um, Master Zick, the little tiny guy who is much older than everyone else, he actually calls him Master and defers to him quite respectfully. And he actually gets Xena to work for him through flattery rather than by threats. So Zavik is a little bit more complicated than his uh, big brawly demon facade would, would put out. But this isn't a video about Zavik. It's about Rough and Tumble. And um, that, that's basically their backstory. I don't believe that they've done anything since the Bad Guys special. But I doubt it'll be long before we see them again. And we'll get to hear some more hilarious uh, introductory... Um, poems like this one. Better not be tripping. You better not stumble. It's action figure time for rough and tumble. All right, so uh, once again, we got to give some special thanks to Corey Sonic Fan Twenty Two, who made some really nice three D models of rough and tumble, and he of course lent me their heads and some of their other accessories, so I could use them to make more accurate action figures. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and make them, and we're going to start out with the small, agile one, who is, of course, named Ruff, because we know we all love our ironic naming conventions. From one style to another, we're always ready to rumble, for we are the action figures of Ruff and Tumble. And like most of my Jazzwares scaled Sonic figures these days, uh, Ruff is made out of a Mega Constructs figure. This one is mostly a Halo alien. Um, as From what I understand, it's a Jackal. I don't really know a lot about Halo, so I had to look it up on the wiki. Which I found kind of weird, because based on the way this action figure looks, his head looks a lot more like a Moray Eel than anything else. But I guess that's just the scale. Um, the, they aren't the original legs, though. They, they just come off of a random Spartan figure, because I, I'm using the legs to make something else. Uh, so, I, I specifically chose this guy because of his hunched posture, which I felt suited Tumble quite well. And, um, I started by, uh, you know, just, uh, sculpting, sculpting stuff over the body. Like, you know, smoothing away that armor look to create something, uh, more furry and stuff like that. Um, uh, Tumble's head, uh, Ruff's head, is also made on the 3D printer, good old-fashioned 3D printer. And, um, everything came out okay except for his two little bangs, which were just too thin for my printer to resolve. So I went ahead and used a couple of Tails' as bangs. Uh, you know, so that there's a part of a Jazzwares figure in there, technically speaking. Haha. <laughs> um, and it's attached to the body by, uh, cutting off the ball part of the, uh, Moray Eel head from the Jackal. And then drilling that in... And, um, and sticking it all into place. Uh, here's a quick test build I made just to make sure the whole operation wouldn't completely fail because the neck didn't work. So, yeah. Oh, by the way, I actually tilted the head back at a 45 degree angle when I printed it. Specifically so that it would have a flat spot at this angle to connect to the body. You know, because 
because like I said, hunched over posture. Prepare for trouble and make it double. It's time to blast off with rough and tumble. Tail actually comes from a Jack specific tails figure. Uh, this is because it would be bigger and skunks really kind of have gigantic tails in proportion to the rest of their bodies. So, you know, everything works out. That's actually kind of a big thing about uh, Tumble. He's uh, always been self-conscious about how short and stumpy his tail is. And when he gets new weapons, if he can, he wants to have them like attached to his tail to be the thing that he doesn't actually have. Like, that was actually one of the conditions for working with Starline's new uh, team. Like, like, can the weapons be made tail-shaped? Yes, yes, they can. Okay, I'm in. Alright, but, you know, we're talking about rough right now, not tumble. Um, so, yeah, it's just kind of stuck on there. It's, uh, it's, it, it's kind of huge, and it makes the figure a bit back-heavy, so it can be really hard to get him to stand unless he's in that hunched-forward posture that he tends to be in. So I think I would like to find a more elegant solution to this next time, like maybe find a way to make the tail articulated, but you know, this is just a quick little thing I'm doing for myself, so you don't have to worry too much about it. Um, the feet and gloves for this guy are just uh, printed from Corey's models and then attached to the base figure in ways that would make the most sense. I also did some things like sculpt the hair points because uh, Rough and Tumble have pointy hair points on like their elbows and knees. Uh, you know, giving him that spiky, unkempt look, which helps him earn that nickname, Rough. Uh, and, um, yeah, that's, uh, that, that would be everything uh, Rough-related. So, um, yes, yeah, so look upon the face of, of Rough, all nice and painted. Uh, it's, uh, this guy, um, I think he might have severe liver issues. Because I think the only people that have yellow sclera are suffering from a pretty bad case of jaundice. Or is that maybe only your skin that turns yellow? I don't know if it affects your eyes. Um, but then again, he is an animal. Animals aren't really under any kind of obligation to have white eyes like we are. Uh, so we will revisit this a bit later in the video when we're doing the completed ones. Uh, up next, we're going to start doing the construction for his buddy, Tumble. Prepare yourselves. Because this one's off the cuff. My name's Tumble, and this is Rough. And if you try to fight us, you know you won't be tough enough. Tumble is a much more traditionally built figure. In, in fact, it almost feels like a throwback at this point. He's made from a Storm the Albatross, being the only other official character I know of that has a physical body physique that matches Tumble's with the large inverted... Um, um, I guess the exaggerated chest with the short stumpy legs, like, uh, huh, yeah, that's, uh, that, that is a very common body type in cartoons, but for the life of me, I can't figure out if it's actually, like, something that you could say, like, like, there are other characters in the Sonic franchise that have it, like, in Sonic Boom, Knuckles and Dr. Eggman had bodies shaped like this, um, except that they had long legs, uh, specifically the body type with little short legs. It's extremely common, especially if you want to do a parody of a macho guy in a cartoon, but to actually find action figures like that is a bit rare, and Storm is one of the few that actually fills that bill. Uh, so I had this slightly damaged Storm figure that had been donated to me, and I decided to go ahead and use it as the base. Um, all dismantled with the 3D printed shoes and head, I decided that he could keep Storm's hands because, you know, they're big and they fit on the wrist pegs just fine, so why mess with a good thing? I, uh, then proceeded to get to work. Your end is near. Get ready to rumble. The names you should fear. Rough and tumble. Okay, so fortunately, the boots printed out quite cleanly. And they were big enough that I could just drill down into them and stick Storm's legs inside after a good paint job. And, um, that's, uh, that's where the simple parts, uh, well, it's not like this thing was super complicated, but I did have to do a lot of little nitpicky things. Uh, a lot of extra sculpting points for his, uh, his hair points, uh, a new tail, which is completely made out of epoxy sculpt, and a little bit of more accoutrement. 
I decided to use like craft foam to do the wrist cuff things and all the points are also cut out of craft foam. You know, because uh, sculpting or trying to 3D print something so tiny wouldn't work out very well. And um, you know, this is just like, it's flexible and um, protected against like brushing against something and snapping off, you know? Um, now the hardest part about Tumble, it, believe it or not, is that he is apparently an albino skunk. Um, you know, because he's like a very light brownish gray with like a cream color instead of the traditional black and white, which is unusual for a skunk. It's like, yeah, he, he legit comes off as like an albino or at least a, uh, um, a, what is it, a melanin -y challenge individual? Is fur colored by melanin or is only skin colored by melanin? What gives fur its color? I'm actually not sure. Um, but yes, as an albino, he also has blood red eyes. Um, red eyes are another thing that you'll often see on albinos. Like, uh, you, you know, like those little white rabbits, like there's no, there's no coloring to hide their blood vessels. So they're much more visible. Um, so yeah, that is the, uh, the very color in, uh, uh, challenge tumble. I, I just bring up the albino-ness because, uh, I had to mix these light colors myself, and then it took a couple of days to paint this figure because every layer, every part of him needed to be painted three times to make sure the layers look good. Because, like, this light color, it just, uh, you know, it doesn't have a very deep coverage. I mean, I guess maybe I could have found a paint that, that, uh, that that it naturally is this color so maybe it would do better with a single coat but again like i said um there are no craft stores in my area that sell model paints like vallejo or citadel or anything like that only only craft paints are sold around here so i had to make do with what i could find um and yes there's no way that i'm going to trust an online shopping for very obscure weird little paint colors when i have no way to guarantee that my computer screen is showing me what the colors would look like in real life. I tried that before and got burned that way. Um, okay, so that would be all the parts of Tumble that are made, so I guess all that's left now is to do the double reveal. Get ready to rumble. Your other toys are gonna crumble because they're no match for Rough and Tumble. And so here we have the eponymous duo, Rough and Tumble. Yep, these two guys are just iconic next to each other and I simply couldn't make a rough video and then a tumble video because it just feels weird to say one of their names without saying the other one. Uh, these guys really are kind of like the Team Rocket of the Sonic franchise in that they seem to have a really epic bromance thing going on. I do believe they are brothers, but like they get along really well. Um, and uh, they have like a really cool thing going on. And um, even though they are the bad guys and they have aligned themselves with some of the worst scum in the Sonic franchise history, you really can't get a, you really can't be too hard against them because they're just so darn funny. They really are like Team Rocket in that respect. I mean, if you think about it, Jesse and James from Team Rocket are they are gangsters who work for an organization that poaches and steals other people's Pokemon uh, for sale on the black market or illegal fighting tournaments and stuff like that. But you never really focus too much on that because the two of them are just so darn cute, you know? So that's kind of what these two guys are. Who cares if they've worked for demons, genocidal dictators, mad scientists, or that they took over a town and tried to rule it as a pair of budget dictators? Well, I'm sure the people who live in that town care. But the fact of the matter is that they just co they're just they just coded as fairly harmless and even generally likable. Get ready for two great masterpieces. We're so great, we make other art crumble. For we are Wake Angel's custom figures of Rough and Tumble. I really feel like if Starline hadn't crapped the bed and decided to keep his little team bad guys thing going on, Rough and Tumble might actually have held them together as like, the, for want of a better term, the moral center. Like, um, 
even mimic the octopus who hated every second of having to interact with other people could actually generally tolerate con contact with them for a significant amount of time. And heck, you know what? I think Zavik actually liked them. And that's really saying something coming from Zavik. So, uh, who knows? Maybe at some point in the future, Rough and Tumble might be that traditional form that helps uh, Zavik and the rest of the Zeti realize that, hey, maybe existence doesn't have to be um, constant conquest and fighting and suffering. Maybe, in general, some of us actually can get along a little bit. I suppose. <laughs> Who knows? I'm just writing fan fictions in my head again. Uh, so thank you all for watching the video, and I hope you guys like the little rough and tumble poems that the fans have submitted, and uh, my dramatic reading of them. Sorry I'm not a voice actor and couldn't really come up with any cool graphics for it or anything like that. Uh, but this is Wake Angel 2001, signing off. Now I gotta hurry up and uh, upgrade that Neo Metal Sonic head. Here for a fumble! Cause you're dealing with Rough and Tumble, featuring yours truly, Rumble. Huh?